Today. Come on, somebody pray for the ministry of worship today. God, we know, we know, we declare your word says we have not because we ask not. And we're asking for your move in this house. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout amen. Come on, if you're ready to worship Jesus, give God some praise today. You're welcome to come to this altar. Let's worship him with everything that we are. Hallelujah. Come on, good morning and welcome to City Church. Come on, there's victory in the house for you this morning. Come on, if you're online or 
in the building, somebody shout, hallelujah. It is 
for your goodness and your mercy and you're just you're just so good to us oh god we thank you today come on church if you if you're alive and well today give the lord yes. give the lord an offering of praise good come on. morning city church are you excited to be in the house of the lord this Amen. morning there's nothing like coming together with your family and worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I mean, we're glad today when they said, let's get up and go to the house of the Lord. We love the Lord. And we want to welcome those also who are visiting us online. Let's give them welcome a big God bless you. Welcome to our online Come on, everybody. audience. God bless welcome you. Welcome to all those. Why don't you tell us where you're from if you're watching online right now. Yeah. We want to know where you're watching from. That's so exciting. If you're if you're watching us from the Ninth Ward, or, or you're watching us from Kenner, or, Africa, or New York, you know, or California, or or, or uh, where, England, whatever you may be, just let us know. And it's important for us to be aware. We have faithful members oh. around the world that watch, that send their tithe, and yeah, they just so stay connected, and they're just not local. So we thank God for all of you so watching online. This is to everyone, even if you're here today, and you want to stay in touch with everything that's going on yes. with City Church, City College, everything that's involved here on this campus, you can stay in touch with us throughout the week if you'll just go to social media because we all know everybody's on it most of us are on facebook and you can follow us on instagram facebook youtube and you can find out what's going on throughout the week and what we want you to do is go ahead and like it and subscribe it yes don't just be a voyeur but be a participant and be involved and what's going on. Also, I love watching prayer on Wednesday mornings yeah. on Facebook at 7 a.m. And also there's some news coming out about the prophetic class. Well, I yeah. wanted to say today is Sunday, April 14th. Yep. And Tuesday, April 30th is just right around the corner. Right. And I want you to tell us, so many people are so excited about this. Well, we have a number of people already signed up. Again, April 30th, it's a prophetic class. Everyone here has the opportunity to hear the voice of God. You know why? Because you're sheep. And Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. However, there are a lot of different strange voices out there. Sometimes we get confused. Is that God's voice? Is this the Lord's, you know, is this, is this the devil's voice? Is my voice? Is it my wife's voice? I don't know. Uh, but, but, but whatever, we want to be able to distinguish, and that's what this class helps you to distinguish. And also we're launching a prophetic community along with us. So you'll be able to blog and, and, and talk to one another about what God is saying to you. And we've already given it a name. Like we have the Breakfast Club, we've already given it a really cool name, all right? You ready for this? Go back to the 80s. You've heard of the movie Dead Poets Society, right? Well, this is Dead Prophets Society. Yes. We're dead to the world. Alive in Christ. And if you're truly a prophet of God, you got to be dead to the world and dead to yourself. So that's just, we're having fun with it. But anyway. Now this is a city college course that this time, this yeah. semester will be offered online. Online. Yeah. So you will be able to Wherever have that convenience to be able to watch the class online. That's going to be. And you can register today at, at City, city College, college Nola. Nola. Dot org. Yep. CityCollegeNola.org. Do it right now as it's open, and we've had a number of people already 
last week uh, signed up. So we're looking forward to that. I'll be teaching the class myself, looking forward to spending time with those who want to hear, want to know more about how to walk with God in a very intimate way. We're going to have some good times there. But today we're going to have a good time in the house of the Lord. So wanna... I would like to meet those of you who are here for your first time. Your first time. Would you just raise your hand right where you are if this is your first, your time, first time at City Church? Welcome. It's so exciting to have welcome. you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to just take a short time for right. our meet and greet. Just meet someone, love them with the love of the so Lord. So we're going to take two minutes, no more than two minutes, and let's get across the aisle, meet somebody today, and welcome them to the house of the Lord. Two minutes. Well, good morning, online family. We want to greet you and welcome you uh, specifically into this service. And listen, you are some of y'all are already letting us know where you're watching from. And I am on Facebook, and yes. you're on... What? Yes, good morning. I'm on YouTube. We're so glad welcome. that our online community has joined us. Thank you for watching. We love hearing from you, knowing where you're coming from. Please take a moment to share. As you heard Pastor Tammy say, where are you? I've got Deborah Haynes this morning. We've got Denise Carter. Fantastic. Good morning to you. Marlene is watching from New York. Denise is in Rowlett, Texas. I have Sean Alphonse watching. We have Clarence Davis from Lafayette watching. We're so glad you've taken time to join us this morning. Look, if you're new, we also want to know about you. Please type the word new in the chat to connect with you further. Also, you can use your QR code that you see on the screen, and that's another way to very easily connect with us. Thank you for watching. For all those who are um, our faithful viewers and our new viewers. Listen, if you desire prayer, another thing you can do is type prayer in the comments or go to citychurchnola.life, and there's a form you can fill out if you, receive, if you want to receive prayer. Our team is ready and waiting to connect with you and, and to see the amazing things that God wants to do in your life. Yes, all of us need prayer. We want to stand with you in agreement for whatever that prayer need is. We're just so glad you're a part of our service. We are full of expectation. Yeah. We know that Bishop has such a powerful, life-giving word to share with us. You know, lastly, go online, subscribe to social media. We'll see you soon. Serving the city of New Orleans for over 48 years, Bishop McManus Academy is ranked as one of the finest private schools in the area. BMA offers pre-K-2 through 8th grade Christian education. That's both Department of Education approved and Cognia accredited. We are excited to announce that the application window for the ACE, Arete, and Son of a Saint scholarship programs for the 2024-2025 school year is now open. These scholarships cover over 50% of tuition and fees. For more information, visit our website at bishopmcmanus.com or call us at 504-350-2332. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. City Church will be hosting a baby dedication Saturday, April 20th at 2 p.m. To register your baby, text the word DEDICATE to 504-500-0809. Hello, people of God. What a joy it is to come to you with some exciting news that I believe the Holy Spirit has dropped into my spirit. And I don't just say that lightly, I mean it with all of my heart. 
I am persuaded that God is raising up a prophetic army for a last day anointing. So what does that mean? The Lord has instructed me to create a prophetic community where we can collaborate and orderly understand God's moving of the prophetic in this day. So we're gonna begin a class on how to hear God's voice. If you feel you're prophetic and you wanna know more about how to do things in decency and in order, and you wanna be a part of a prophetic community, I'm talking to you. So look out, there's some news coming down the line. You can join us. The prophetic community is on the way and God has something special for you. Hearing the Voice of God class begins April 30th with Bishop Owen McManus Jr. To register, visit citycollegeanola.org today. It's time for God's tithes and our offerings. Why don't you stand with me today? We're going to do something just a little different. There's a beautiful scripture in the Bible where the Bible says that God gives seed to the sower. And I'd like you to be encouraged today with however you transmit your tithes, whether you have an envelope in your hands, which I know our young people think is old school, but us old school people, we like to fill out that envelope. And the IRS also like the envelopes because if you are special and you get audited, then envelopes are just so much easier to send to them to prove that you made a significant contribution to the kingdom of God. But however you transmit today, it is seed. And the scripture says, God places the seed in your hands and my hands. And I want us to pray over that seed today. So if you're holding your phone because you have transmitted your tithes electronically, then just hold that phone. Because the seed is not only for sowing. The Bible says God also gives the sower bread for eating. And so the seed that God places in your hand and in my hand places also the responsibility of knowing, Lord, Help me discern what seed is for sowing and what seed is for making bread for feeding my family. Everything about our relationship with God is educational. The patterns and principles of His Word are forever teaching you and I how to live life at an optimal level, at a higher level. You know that. I know that. That's why the Word declares God's thoughts are not man's thoughts and God's ways are not man's ways. But God's thoughts and God's ways are so much higher. But His patterns and principles within the teachings of His Word elevate you and I to a higher place of thinking, to a higher place of acting, resulting in a higher place of living. And so when I look at that seed, Tithing is so easy because it's 10%. You see, I don't get it when intelligent people in a state capital make state tax 8.3421%. Right. Because I can't work that out. 10%. I can work that out. And so God has made it easy. So when we look at the seed, one tenth is holy. And the Bible says it belongs to God. It's not even ours. It's in fact never ours. Amen. So now we're looking at the 90%. And then we say, well, Father, help us to discern that which is for sowing and that which is bread for eating. Let's pray today. Father, thank you for placing seed in the hands of your children in the hands of sons and daughters. 
seed that you give us in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for that. Provision, Lord, by employment. Provision, Lord, by blessings. Provision, Lord, by ways and means unexpected. We thank you for that seed. And today, Lord, that 10% which we know is holy to you, we give to you in obedience. And Lord, we ask you for your direction and discernment and wisdom to know how to work the rest of the seed. Bless the seed today in your children's hands, we pray and ask in Jesus' mighty name. Those of you online, please follow the prompts. Those of you in the house, let's give God tithes and offerings today in Jesus' name. present these tithes and offerings, we ask that you receive it as part of our worship of who you are in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, remain standing with me one more minute. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord? I want to see everybody today. Praise the Lord. Don't forget continue to look at, we just had some people to sign up, so it's exciting. I'm looking forward to this. I've taught this class for a number of years. Even if you've taken it before, this is going to be a little bit different. There's a lot of new material, uh, a lot of new action that's going to take place. So uh, I encourage everyone who can be a part of this opportunity. It's going to be a fantastic time. We're on really groundbreaking here. I believe there's some great things going to take place from uh, this. So would you just Join with me just for a moment, worship the Lord. We sing praises to his name. How many love him today? How many adore him? And we worship him today. So join with me, everyone. Lift your voice, everyone. Sing it. We sing praises to your name. thank you today for this moment that you have given to us, this day that you have created.
to give you glory and honor. This is Sunday. It's the first day of the week. And you promised that when we put you first, that you would put us first. And so today we're here to honor you. We thank you. And we bless you for all that you have done. But we're looking forward to the future because we know in you our future is bright and promising. And so we ask, Holy Spirit, that for the next few minutes that you'll anoint every heart, bring every thought into captivity, anoint every heart here, everyone, and we give you honor, we give you the praise, and we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. And everybody says together real loudly, amen. You may be seated. Again, it's good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. We welcome those. Again, you're online, and we honor you and welcome you here to the house of the Lord. We're in a series, and we've been talking about prayer, prayer. And we're using the tabernacle and the temple, temple of prayer, as our uh, prototype of how to spend quality time in communion with Almighty God. How many know that it is a privilege for us to be able to spend time with the Lord Jesus? Yeah. It's, it's a privilege. And so sometimes we don't know how to go about it that we, 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 we forfeit our opportunity to spend communing moments with God. Prayer, if there is going to be anything that takes place in the earth, it's going to be through prayer. And, you know, someone says, well, what is prayer? And I've, I've defined what prayer is, but prayer is simply you giving permission to God to work in your life. You say, well, God, does, God can do what he wants to do. Yes, he can do what he wants to do, but he's chosen, he's chosen to have you involved. And God only operates on the earth in our lives when we actually call upon him, ask him, and grant him permission to operate in our lives. Meanwhile, if you don't want God, God will stand back. And that's amazing because God can do what he wants to because he's almighty. But yet he chooses your, your decision, your will to either have life or death. So we're talking about prayer and then we're using the tabernacle as our template for our communing with God. We start off our prayer real, real quickly. We start like we start off church. We start off by worshiping and praising the Lord. I love to look around the song that we're all singing, praise the Lord. I look around and see Pat, I see uh, Elder Charles. Man, I haven't seen him dance like that in quite a time. Oh, wow, it's good to see. I mean, that's how we start off our worship. That's how we start off our prayer. We thank God for what he has done. Anybody here have anything to thank God for? Of course. Yeah. Praise the Lord. He woke you up this morning. He's done great things. He's done, yeah. You say, well, 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 then that's how we start off. Don't start off your prayer by going right into requesting. So we, 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 the, the Old Testament priest would come into the temple and they would begin by entering into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. So we start off our prayer and then we, 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 we move into the inner court and I mean, the outer court and we see that there, right there as we walk in, there's the altar. And the altar represents the cross to us in the New Testament. Thank God for the cross. That's what Easter's all about. The cross gives us the blood and we can only come to God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And then when we pass that labyrinth, this is how I spend my time with the Lord. I'll envision. How many know you have an imagination? Yeah, when you can use your imagination for a whole lot of stuff. You can use it for bad things, but you can use your imagination for good things. And so I am the temple of the living God. You are the temple of God. So I envision as I'm walking through the outer court and I'm worshiping, I stop off at the, at, the, at, the, at the altar and I begin to thank God for the cross. How many are thankful today for the cross of Jesus Christ? Without the cross, without the cross, we are a people without much hope. But then as we enter the, the outer court, right beyond the, the, the brazen altar is the laver. And the laver is a basin where the priests would come 
and they would wash their hands, wash their head, wash their feet, and this would prepare them to move into the presence of God. Now, here's the thing. If you do not allow God daily to cleanse you and to wash you, you will allow a buildup of condemnation. And so condemnation will cause you to cancel out on your walk with God. Now, it's not God that condemns you, but the devil's very good at bringing up every time you've missed it, right? How many, can I get a witness here? You don't, you, you know, you haven't, you haven't done anything in 20 years and the devil will remind you, hey, remember back in blah, 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 and remind you. And so condemnation will build up and keep you from moving into the presence of God. So when we come, I use the Ten Commandments and I, re, I, I ask the Lord, you know, is there any other gods before me? I don't, I don't, try, to, I don't try to judge myself or let the Holy Spirit judge. Is there any, do I have any other idols? That's the second commandment, any idols in my life? Do I have, is there anything that, that, that's blocking you from blessing me? And then, you know, <clears throat> have I taken the name of the Lord God's, his, his name in vain? Have I, have I used his name unwisely? And, you know, it's not just uh, swearing or using God, but it, it's, it's also have I, have I uh, misrepresented God's name? Have I given God a bad name? And of course, then we move on from there and we can go through all the Ten Commandments. I don't have time because I want to get to where I meet today, to where we want to we want to focus on. But of course, then, you know, uh, the Sabbath day, keep it holy. You know, you know, that's 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 one. And, and then we go to the, you know, the honoring our parents and, and and of course don't lie, don't cheat, don't commit adultery, and don't covet. So we I asked the Holy Spirit, show me, is there any of these areas of my life that are not in alignment to your word and to your way because God's not going to bless someone who's walking in deliberate disobedience. And so I don't, I, so, so day by day, you know, I can, I can, you know, here's the thing about your Christian walk. Just because you got it right today don't mean you're going to have it right tomorrow. And, but here's the good news. Just because you got it wrong yesterday don't mean you can't get it right today. So we, 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 we continue, so we stand there in the presence of the Lord and, and God begins to show me. He'll speak things to my heart that I wasn't even, you know, one day I, I was praying about that coveting and I was like, I don't covet anybody. I mean, who, who's the wife would I want? I got a really good wife. I got a really hot wife, nice wife. I don't need anybody else's wife. He said, but no, have you ever prayed for other churches to prosper? I said, no. He said, well, then then uh, don't look at someone else and think that their church is doing better. I said, well, Lord, I, 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 don't, I don't know. He said, no, no, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray for the churches, not in California, but the churches right down the street from you, that they would prosper and grow and be in good health. And so God will speak these things to you, see. He'll speak these things. And so from there, now we move into the presence of the Lord. And that's where we see the lampstand, which, is the, which is, represents the Holy Spirit. How many know without the Holy Spirit, we can't live this life? Amen. Every day I ask the Holy Spirit to anoint me. How many know we have decisions that we have to make? And a lot of times we try to make decisions on our own, and then we want to ask God, what do you think about it after we have made our decision? The time to... Con con uh, to confirm from God what he wants you to do is before you make the decisions. And so the Holy Spirit grants to us counsel, might. He, 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 he grants to us when we walk with him, he gives us wisdom. Wisdom. And as Pastor Harvey says many times, there is no university for wisdom. You can go to university and learn a lot of book knowledge, but you can't acquire wisdom. Why? Because wisdom comes from God. If there's anything that we need in this hour, we need to walk as wise people upright before God, knowing his will and his way. So we have the Holy Spirit who illuminates. And then right there next to the, 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 the lampstand, I'll talk to the Holy Spirit. And I'll ask him, and this is where I really start having fun, see. This is, this is I'm just, I'm tuning you in. I'm, I'm just, you're able to peer into my, 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 my prayer time. So now, right now, so I, begin, I ask the Holy Spirit to show me what he wants me to do, how I need to react, and, and he'll correct me. 
And, 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 and the Holy Spirit is a very, very sensitive individual. If I wanted to compare the Holy Spirit to a gender, I would have to say the Holy Spirit is more female. You say, well, that's, that's, that's kind of odd. Well, I, God's not either male or female, but he has attributes of both genders. So the Holy Spirit is the, most, is the more sensitive part of the Godhead. It's, it's, Jesus said, Jesus said that, that what we see when Jesus was baptized that the, 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 the dove uh, or the Holy Spirit came as a dove. And the dove, I don't know right now in, in April, but doves are trying to build nests all around my house. And um, I don't, you hear them cooing. I hear them cooing in the, I don't know, anybody, anybody have any doves around? Maybe you need to move. If you don't have doves, maybe you find out where there's some doves. But you hear them, and, 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 and so one was, one was building a nest right outside my house. But the problem was it was messy. And I came out and just kind of, you know, gave it a look and, and it left. Thank God. I didn't have to, you know, all the bird lovers, they didn't kill anything. Just don't, don't write me an email. Don't do that yet. But, uh, but they're easy to scare off. And the Holy Spirit is the same way. The Holy Spirit can be easily grieved. The Holy Spirit is very sensitive. So we, we, we spend time, and then the Holy Spirit begins to illuminate the table, which is right. We talked about the table last week, table of showbread, that that represents the Word of God. How many love the Word of God? But see, the written Word of God, the written Word of God can be studied and interpreted. But I'm not looking just for the written Word of God. I love the Bible. I, I love the Bible. I have many Bibles. I, I love this one. Uh, and and I, re, I read on this, but you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just now. There's so much on 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 electronic. You know, you can get about 25 different translations at, at the at the you know just a, a, a click of you know switch. But I mean, but I, I love the word. But what I'm looking for is the rhema. What is God saying to me today? What, what is God saying to me today about my situation? And so, so there, there we, we begin to, and then of course the table of showbread represents not only the, the word of God, but it also represents the body of Christ. So I pray for the church. I pray for the health. I pray for, I pray for the wealth of the church. I pray for the, the growth of the church. I pray for the opportunities of God's house, not just here, but the church worldwide. I'll, sometimes I'll pray for missionaries that I haven't, haven't talked to in a while that we support. And it's just there I begin now, I'm moving in a different I'm in dimension, okay? I'm, I'm moving now where the Holy Spirit is, is connecting. Now, you say, how long do you stay at these different stations? Sometimes it could be, it, it could be five minutes. Sometimes I could, you know, and I, I'm just saying now, uh, you know, I, there are times where I, I'm able to, to spend an hour or two hours, three hours, four hours with God. But just to say if I only got 30 minutes, I can't stay at each one, just one 30 minutes. But here's the issue. As I'm communing with God, God allows me to stop at one place longer because he's dealing with some things in me that have to be dealt with. So I'm just sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So I'm not saying I've got to do this. It's not just so, so systematic, but I have a way of which I approach God. And this is not just my interpretation. This is, this, is, this is biblical. It's heavenly. Because what we see in the temple on the earth is a replication of the temple that's in heaven. There's a literal Ark of the Covenant that's in heaven in the throne room. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes that even Revelation, the book of Revelation describes the throne room. And in the throne room, there's the altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant, whose blood is Jesus that's been shed and placed on the Ark of the Covenant. We're trying to get here. Next week, we're going to get here, okay? So if you're wanting this to end, next week's the end, okay? But right now, we're going to talk about the next article, and that's the altar of incense. And there's only one place, there's only one place in the New Testament that I can find that the, that the altar of incense is actually mentioned. I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke, 
Luke chapter, chapter 1, verse 5, and, and this gives us a description of the only place in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, chapter 1, that, that describes to us an incident or a description of the altar of incense. So you can see now we have moved from the out, now we're in the inner court in our prayer time, and here we arrive at the altar of incense. Let me just read to you uh, the book of, book of Luke, chapter 1, and I, I want to read verse, verse 5, and we're going to read down to verse 13, okay? It says, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias. He was of the division of Abijah. His wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. His wife was is Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had, listen now, and this is what we're going to get to later on, but just, just, just stay with me. But, they, lay, but they, they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. Kind of sounds like Abraham and Sarah. Verse 8, so it was that while he was serving as a priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense, to burn incense when he went into the temple, here we go, we go now, the temple of the Lord. Now, we know in the New Testament, this is right before, this is before, you know, Jesus hasn't even been born yet. But we know that the New Testament, the, the first in Corinthians tells us that we, we are the temple of God. So I want you to use these, 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 these metaphors of who we are today. This is literal, but it yet we today are the temple of the Lord. Verse 10, and the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel, then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. So here in the New Testament, we see that Zacharias at the hour of prayer is standing at the altar of incense. Now remember, there are two different altars. The first altar was the altar, the brazen altar, which represents the cross. Now we see inside of the New Testament, inside of the temple, we see the altar of incense. And this is where intercession is made. And what is ironic, and we're going to talk about this at the very end, is that Zacharias gets a word from God about his children at the altar of incense. I believe the altar of incense represents to us is where we begin to now move into intercession. Intercession. And the scripture is very clear about it. That in the sanctuary building outside of Jerusalem, there were two rooms, a holy place. And we see right here the altar of incense, which represents the place where we intercede for other people. It may be our city, it may be our family, it, it may be for others, but this is the place where we can we begin to intercede. Exodus chapter 30, verse 6 says, You shall put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet you. Psalms 141, look at this, verse 2. Accept my prayer as incense offered to you and my upraised hands as evening 
offering. So remember, there are two, there are two altars, and they're significantly joined together. And this is why you need to, we need to visit the cross before we begin to intercede, because the fire on the altar, the brazen altar, comes from heaven. And it was the priest's responsibility to take the fire that God sent to the altar of the brazen altar, the cross, and take that fire, and that fire is what perpetuates the fire that goes on within the altar of incense. And here's the thing, you can't really intercede on your own. It's got to be led by the fire of the Holy Spirit. So by the time you get here, you should be praising God, you should be thanking God, and now you'll begin to move into a place of intercession. And here's what I want to talk about for a few minutes today. There is a need today for people who will not just pray or commune or listen to the voice of God, but God is looking for people who will stand in the gap for someone else, for a city, for a church, for a family that will say, here I am, Lord, use me, speak through me, use me for your glory. Isaiah 59, verse 16, listen to what, what, what Isaiah prophesies about, about intercession. He said, I saw there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him. So God is looking for a people who will intercede on behalf of a nation, of a city, of a family, of a friend. He's looking for somebody who will say, here I am, Lord, whatever you want to do, use me. Now, how do, we inter how do we define intercession? The word defines it as this, simply, the act of bringing a request before God on behalf of others. Yep. It's standing in the gap, standing in the gap for someone else. We all have needs and we pray and we make petition and we request, but there is a need in the house of God. There's a need in the church, there's a need in the city, there's a need in the nation for a people that needs to understand that if somebody doesn't stand in the gap and pray, something is not going to change. Some things will change on its own, but most things that are spiritual will only take place when there are a people who will say, here I am, Lord, use me. I wonder today, you don't have to raise your hand, how many here have felt the need to intercede on behalf of your nation, of your city, of your family, for your friends, for your neighbors, oh, here's a good one, even for your enemies. That's when you really get spiritual. That's when you really get mature, when you can pray for somebody as if you're praying for yourself. Come on, somebody. Intercessors in the scripture, think about it. Intercessors, Job interceded for his friends. You, 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 I always love to read the story of Job, and I never want to go through the things that Job went through. However. The longer I live, I think I'm getting close. But Job never got one of his friends to ever tell him anything nice. They were always on him. If you would have done this, you wouldn't have had that happen to you. Isn't that like what everybody likes to tell you? They always want to tell you what you did wrong. Sometimes bad things happen to us when we do things right. It's not always when we do things wrong, sometimes it happens because we're doing righteous things and we have opposition and the devil don't like what's going on, so he sends an assignment to take us out. But here's the, the thing that I'm saying, Job at the end, instead of cursing his friends, he stood in the gap and God said, I'll only heal them if you pray for them, Job. Woo! That's when you get real spiritual. People have been putting you down for years, and then God says, this is God a way. He makes a way in the wilderness, right? I'll only heal him, Job, if you pray for him. And Job does. Not only did Job, but Moses. Moses interceded for an entire nation. 
Moses was sent by God, and there were times that God wanted to kill Israel. How many ever read that? And God said, if you kill them, you got to kill me. God says, okay, I want to get them all out, but only because of you, Moses, I won't do what I need to do. Think about it. Peter was in jail, and the church interceded for Peter, and Peter was released. And here's the funny part. When Peter shows up and he knocked on the door, the lady who answered the door didn't even believe it that it was him. Now, that's funny. You're praying for God to work a miracle. When God does it, you don't even believe it. But the reason why Peter was released from jail was because the church was interceding for its pastor. How, I, don't want to, I don't want you to raise your hand, but I wonder how many people here would pray for me if I went to jail. <laughs> I'm not planning on going to jail, <laughs> but I'm asking you now before. <laughs> or would you write a Facebook post about me? Uh-oh. Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying. No, these people got on their, their knees and they prayed for Peter to be released. Intercession. Think about it. Jesus lives every day to make intercession for you. And we just read in the book of Luke chapter 1 that John and Elizabeth interceded for their family. Again, Isaiah 59, 16, he saw that there was, there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him. Now, I want you to envision today when we're talking about, about intercession, because here's where people need to just, I want to give you some meat and then we'll get into, to, to finish this up today. I want you to envision that there is, there, there's a, a huge cup, an intercession, and I've, I've talked about this before, that intercession is a continuous prayer of supplication and request to heaven on behalf of a people, a nation, a family, an individual. And this cup continuously receives the prayers, which only then brings an answer to the prayers when the cup is full. And this is why when someone says, why doesn't God move when I pray the first time? Because you've got to understand what's going on. At the same time, there is a cup of prayers which releases salvation. There's also a cup of iniquity. And in a given situation, the, the accusations and the and the 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 the, the, the information and the, the constant uh, barrage of negative comes before the throne of heaven. And I'll give you a case in point. God said, "I'm going to destroy Sodom because their wickedness has continuously come before me." Now. Here's what we need to understand. Intercessors stand in the gap to offset the spiritual condition of iniquity. So if we have a family who is involved in iniquity, and all of us are, have been, you know, we've all come from iniquity, but, but if there is an overwhelming evidence coming before heaven of the iniquity within an individual, a family, a church, a, 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 a city, a nation, it continues to build until the cup of wrath is poured out upon a people or a nation or a city. Now, I want you to think of the opposite. When God's people, God even said when he wanted to destroy he wanted to destroy uh, Sodom. He said, if I can find 50 people, I won't destroy it. God came back. 
He went all the way down to 10. God was saying, if I can just find one, I will save this city from the wrath that continuously comes before me. I want you to understand today how important intercession is in the life of the church, in the life of your family, in, 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 the, in, in, in the scheme of God's kingdom and how it works. Revelation at chapter 8, verse 3 says this, then the, another angel having a golden censer, this is what I'm talking about, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne and the smoke of incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. So here's what happens. We continue to pray. We continue to pray. We intercede and we allow God to use us to pray on behalf of others, on behalf of a city, on behalf of a nation, on behalf of a church. And as we continue to pray, we build, we fill, we fill up the censer, we fill up the cup until the evidence becomes overwhelming that God says now, I've heard your prayer, it's time, here's your answer. How many times, we just read in the book of Luke chapter 1, how many times had Zechariah prayed at that same altar, God, my wife is barren, she was 20 years old, nothing happened. She was 30 years old, nothing was happening. 40 years old, nothing was happening. 50 years old, she was an old lady. And then in due time, when the altar of incense had risen and filled the censer cup, when John least expected it, He's just there. He's actually dumb. Read the rest of the story. He's so, he don't, he's just doing his little thing. He's just coming to prayer on Friday. Oh, Lord, bless the church, bless the church. And then all of a sudden, there's an angel standing there. But the angel says, I have heard your prayer. And John, I mean, and, and Zachariah says to him, how are you going to do this? He said, here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make you where you can't even talk. And for nine months, nine months, Zacharias never uttered a word until John was born. And it was at the altar that, that Zacharias had brought that request before heaven. What I'm trying to say is maybe you prayed once, maybe you prayed two times, maybe you prayed five times, maybe you've been praying for years and you're thinking about giving up. But God is saying today, don't give up. Keep praying, keep pressing, let him use you because in due season, God is going to show up and a breakthrough is coming your way. I want to encourage you today, if you feel like life is barren, keep on praying, interceding because an angel of the Lord is about to show up. Come on, give him praise today. So real quickly, how do you intercede? How do you intercede? Real quickly, I'm going to show you just three, two or three things here. Number one, pray always according to God's Word. That's good. God's Word should give you a leading for your subject. If you're praying for a family member, how many here today have lost family members and you want to see them come to salvation? Maybe your you are the, you are the key individual. Don't look to someone else today and say, I'll wait for somebody else to pray them through. No, 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 no. God's looking for an individual who will say, here I am, Lord, use me. Second Peter 3, 9 says this, and this is the prayer, this is what I'm praying for lost family members. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering. Thank God. How many are glad he's long-suffering? What does long-suffering mean? It means he suffers a long time for us. 
He's long-suffering towards us, not willing, not willing that any should perish, but that all, all, come on, somebody say all, all, all should come to repentance. So use that scripture when you're praying and, and let that just resonate and begin to germinate and, and marinate in your spirit as you're praying before God. I, 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 when I'm praying for my children, I'm praying for my, uh, you know, now, now I'm praying for grandchildren. Uh, and I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll use this scripture, uh, Doc. Uh, Joshua 24, verse 15, but as for me and my house. Now see, I don't know about you, but if you're living up in my house, sucking up my air condition, eating on my good food, you're going to serve the Lord. Now, I don't know what you do. You may let people just come and go and do what they want to do, but in my house, I'm old school. Yes, sir. It's me and my house. We are going to serve the Lord, and you're going to serve the Lord with gladness. You're going to serve the Lord with thanksgiving. We're not going to allow that kind of attitude to hang around our house. I'm going to let God work it out, and I'm going to help him work it out as well. When you're praying for your city, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, I'll use this scripture. I'll say, Lord, for kings, I pray for all the kings who are in authority. Now, we don't have kings, but we have mayors, and we have governors, and we have presidents, and so senators, and we pray. I pray, Lord, work it out. If, you, if, you, if you're angry about America, you ought to be praying about it. If you're angry about your city, have you been interceding for your city? Or you say, oh, I'll let it go to hell. That's what the world, that's what the devil wants. He wants you to say, well, the hell with it. No, I'm right where I need to be. New Orleans East is exactly where I need to be. And the harder it gets, whatever may happen, we just continue to pound. We continue to pray. We continue to intercede. Why? Because the best is yet to come. All God needs is just one, maybe two people who will gather in his name and say, Lord, I refuse to give up. I refuse to let it go. I'm going to see victory. Victory is in my grasp because the impossible belongs to me in Jesus name somebody shout hallelujah see God's Word gives us authority God's Word gives us authority and so when you pray it should be in God's will secondly what will happen when you intercede is intercession is fueled by brokenness the Lord will bring you to a place where words are not enough. When you're really interceding and you're getting into a deep place, you will notice that sometimes there will be a brokenness that accompanies with crying and groans that are deep within your spirit. How many can say amen to that? Your tears, when now you're at the altar of incense, your tears become the tears of the someone who can't help themselves. So the tears that you cry and the groanings that you groan are not on your behalf, but they're on behalf of someone else, some, some, some other place where you are in a place where you're actually carrying the same suffering and burden that that individual is feeling. And this is the place where when you begin to cry, they're not your tears, they're someone else's tears. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm going to show you. We're not repenting on their behalf, but what you're doing is that you are removing, you are removing the accusations in the spirit realm against that individual. You are praying on behalf. God is trying to enlighten us today. That yes, maybe your son or daughter has gone away from the Lord and they don't know their way back, but God is calling you to stand in the gap, to be a go-between. And the tears that you will cry will be the tears that they are shedding. God is then using you to bring about change. And you say, well, where do you get your information from, Bishop? I'm going to show you Romans 8, verse 26. 
Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes what? Makes what? Come on, let me hear you today. Makes what? For us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. There are moments in prayer where I don't have the words. But there is a yearning and a groaning within. I don't always understand it because my spirit is ahead of my soul. My spirit is ahead of my mind. There are things in the spirit realm that I'm not understanding and comprehending what God is doing. However, I know that as I yield myself to where God wants to bring me, that God is now using me to stand in the same place that he is standing, who is constantly forever making intercession for us. And what I'm doing now is I'm standing next to our Lord who is in heaven at the altar. And I am now a representative on earth. And I am saying, I don't care what's happening right now. There is a change coming and the change is going to happen, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Somebody, if you get this today, give him some praise. The groaning is a feeling of grieving and a deep moan of pain where you carry the burden. You're broken, you're hurting, but it's not because of you. It's not because of what you've done. It's because you have yielded yourself and you're carrying that responsibility with God. If you are prophetic, you are first an intercessor. If you're not an intercessor, you are not prophetic. Now maybe you haven't understood it yet, but they go together like hand in glove. Anyone who is speaking on behalf of God is first a prayer warrior. It begins there. Don't tell me you've got a word from God and you haven't been spending some really good quality time with God because that's where you get your information from. And when you get your information from heaven, no one else can tell you anything different because when God gives you a word, it's a word that's established forever and ever. So I'm calling all of those of you who are going to join my class, you need to be a prayer warrior. Amen. Yield yourself. Yeah. My wife has always said to me, she said, she said, you know, and, and I'm thankful for my family. And I don't mean, I'm, I'm only talking about my examples only simply because I just want to use it as a, 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 a not to brag, but to, to encourage you. She's always reminded me that if God's done anything in our life, it's always been through prayer. Amen. Now, I know it sounds real spiritual and it sounds so far-fetched because sometimes we live in a culture, a, a church culture that is prayerless. But there's some things that God wants to do in your family. There's some things that God wants to do in your home. There's some things that God wants to do in this church, in this city, that are yet to be done because God's looking for a people who don't have a great sound system. He's not looking for people who know how to dress. He's not looking for a very slick, good program church service that attracts everybody. He's looking for a people 
people will say, yes, here I am, Lord. Use me for your glory. Thirdly, intercession identifies with God's people. Daniel 9 says, verse 5, we have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Now, Daniel was not responsible for Israel's captivity. Daniel came later on, but Daniel identifies with the sins of a nation and he identifies with the city, with the sins of the previous generations. There are things that are locked up from you that will only be unlocked when someone will stand in the gap and identify with the iniquities that has been prevalent in your family bloodline or even in a city or a people group. I know this is, this is kind of heavy stuff, but I want you to understand today we're dealing with a very, very heavy subject. You're not asking God, you're not asking God to use you to repent on behalf of someone. What you're doing by identifying with the person, the people group, the city, you are asking God to cancel the legal rights that Satan has gained through disobedience. Satan is a very intelligent being. The principalities, the rulers of darkness are very, very intelligent. The only ones that are not quite as intelligent as them are demons. I think sometimes they're a little bit of, uh, uh, I wouldn't say they're dumb, they're just, they're just not quite as smart. Even though you're praying for your son or daughter, they have to repent. Yep. But what you can do is you can pray that, the, that God will cancel the legal right that Satan has imposed on their life. So you clear out the environment, the clutter, so that they can hear the voice of God and come to the knowledge in the goodness of the Lord. So this is how we do. We identify with God's people. And lastly, intercession does not engage principalities. I learned this principle a long time ago. I don't want to go into deep details, but there was a wave coming through the charismatic church for many years where people were calling down principalities and rulers and darknesses in high places. They were speaking to principalities and rulers. Paul talks about it in Ephesians chapter 6. I would say that many people were hurt during that time and still are kind of uh, cavalier about their prayer. Here's one thing I've learned. I played in sports, I played ball, and I also have played ball in the church. I'm talking about spiritual things. I've always learned, and I, and I watched this, you know, um, my, my Brooke played travel volleyball, very competitive. And I would remind her that when you walk on the court and look at the girls on the other side, don't judge them by what you think they look like. And here's what happened many times. To people that they were supposed to lose, to win, they lost to them. You know why? They underestimated their opponent. And many people today are losing the spiritual warfare battle because they don't respect Satan. Now, I never said you need to love Satan. You need to respect him. You need to respect the principalities because God has never called you to cast them down. I'm just helping you out now. I'm, I, you say, well, what about sickness? That's not principalities. That's, that's common spirits 
of the enemy. We never see in the scripture where Jesus goes around calling down principalities over Galilee. He never cast down, you know why? Because God Almighty has given them the legal right to be where they are. And if you begin to mess with the spirit world and you don't have the authority and the permission, you're not only fighting Satan, you're fighting God. Now, I can't go into all the detail. I'm just telling you, if you notice, li listen to me now. I want to close here. If you notice, Paul in Ephesians tells us to put on what? What does he say to, for us to do, church? Put on what? The armor of God is a defensive. It's defensive. He tells us to put on the armor of God because we fight demons that walk. We can bind and we can loose. I don't go looking for demons. Someone says, you know, one time a, a young man said, he said, uh, I'm going to go to the psych ward and I'm going to cast out every demon uh, on, on the fourth floor. I said, don't do it. They said, why? I said, did you ever see Jesus do it? Jesus doesn't go to the hospital and empty the hospital. Why are you so quiet today? <laughs> Jesus healed people when they came to him. When people come here, they're on my territory. They're in my house. And everything in my house, and I say my house, God's house, you know what I mean, has to come under authority. I can't go to your house and tell you what to do. Because you, sir, have the authority. But in God's house, here's the thing. Don't go. You say, well, well what about witnessing? Go and witness to people. Of course you can witness. Tell people the good news about Jesus Christ. I once was lost, and now I'm found. I once, I, I, I once was, a, was a whole monger, and now I'm a holy man and woman of God. I was this. That's fine. Tell your story. Tell. But you don't go out there and start confronting every devil you meet. You'll wind up running home with your tail between your legs. He said, oh, we got authority. We got all glory and all honor and power. Go do it. And then I'll come pick you up in jail. I tell people, you want to get delivered? Come to this altar. You want to get healed? Come to this house. This is the Father's house. And here's where people, here's where people miss it. They're so cavalier. They're so proud. They're proud that they could cast out devils. And then Jesus tell the disciples, wait, chill out. That's no big deal. I saw Satan fall from heaven. Be glad that your name is in the book. Be glad you're saved. But... If the devil comes to my house in the form of sickness, I have every right to say, in the name of Jesus, devil, get out of my house. This is a disease-free zone. We are healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God, give God praise. Come on, stand on your feet today. So, real quickly, I'm gonna, we're going to, we, we're closing right here. Just come on, keep playing, guys. You don't have to. You know, it's, it's it, John and Elizabeth, John and Elizabeth were standing in the gap for their family. Look at, look, look at Luke 1 verse 11 says, then the angel of the Lord appeared to them, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Look at verse 13. And God says, but the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayers heard. And your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. Here's what I do, and this is how I want to close today. When I pray for my family, when I pray for my family, here's what I do. 
every night, whether my kids are in my house. I have, I have three kids at home. I thought Brooke would be at the dorm, uh, in the school dorm, but, but she's decided to come back home. And mom and I figured out why. Because every time we go out to eat, we pay. <laughs> How do we know I raised some smart children? Yeah. Every time we go out to eat, there's the five of us. I said, you don't want to go off with your friends tonight? She said, why, you want to get rid of me, Dad? I said, no, 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 it's just going to be a cheaper bill. <laughs> but every night, and of course, Ali, Kenny, I treat Kenny like he's my son because he's my son. I plead the blood of Jesus over my family every night, every night. When, when you know, Liz, uh, uh, Brooke, Olivia, Liam, I lay hands on them every night. I mean, I'm trying to, I, I, I've done it so much that they won't accept my wife's prayers. I send my wife, why don't you go pray with the kids tonight and I can just take it easy. And she goes in there and they run her out. And I'm like, what is the problem? They say, we want your prayers, Dad. I said, okay, that's fine. I mean, I feel, I feel kind of like, you know, I mean, I feel honored, but man, could I just have a night off? No, 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 no. They want Dad. They want Dad to pray. And so I plead the blood of Jesus. Every night, you want to plead the blood of Jesus. Do you know the blood was pled over the doorpost and when the death angel came? They were, they were freed, they were healed. I plead the blood, you know why? Because it's a legal term. It's a legal term. I'm telling the enemy, you can't have my children. This is a no demon zone. You say, well, my kids are older. You wanna do the same thing. Or your family, plead the blood over your children. Plead the blood over your husband. Really plead the blood over your husband. If he's giving you a hard time, plead the blood of Jesus over him. If she's giving you a hard time, plead the blood. Plead the blood of Jesus every day over your household. And secondly, when you pray, pray for spiritual service. I'm praying that my kids will not only be successful in the world, but I want my kids to be successful in the house of God. They're taking piano lessons, Doc, not to go make a, to make a Grammy. My kids are taking piano lessons not to get a Grammy, but so that they can lead the house of God in worship and praise. I'm believing that my children are going to be like little olive trees in the house of the Lord. So I pray every night, Lord, use them in the church. I want them to be successful. They play baseball. They play volleyball. I, I, I went to a volleyball tournament yesterday <laughs> again, again and again. That's fine. But there's nothing like looking up and seeing my kids worshiping God in the house. In the house, see? In the house. And thirdly, I bless them every night. My dad always said, son, the belt is for correcting, but hands are for blessing. Bless your children every chance you get. I lay hands on them every night. Now, I can't lay hands on Allie and Kenny, so I'll speak a word. Lord, bless Kenny, bless Allie, bless Noah. Lord, really, truly, bless Noah. Calm his behind down, Lord. I mean, he is full of energy. He comes over and he is amazing. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Let him grow up in the house of the Lord to play piano just like his daddy. Yeah, I'm already prophesying that Allie's baby, little girl, is going to be a singer in the house of God. 
I'm prophesying. He said, can you prophesy that? I'm not speaking what I want. I'm speaking what I see. This is what intercession does. When you intercede, God speaks back to you. I'm praying. God already showed me that little Eva is going to be a little bit like my mom and a little bit like Kenny's mom. She's going to be a hot mess. She's going to be a mess. She's going to be a mess. But she's going to be a blessing. I pray, Lord, bless Olivia. Bless Liam. Keep them and make your face to shine upon them. I bless you, son. I don't only love you, but I bless you. I bless you. And then I ask God to show me their purpose. This is this. this. The Lord spoke to John, I mean, in Zechariah and said, your son is going to bring great joy to a lot of people at the altar of incense. People are praying for their child to be raised as they will. You need to be praying, Lord, what have you decided that you want them to do? I believe I've already had a glimpse of what my children are supposed to be. I can speak it right now. I know what Allie's supposed to do. I know what Brooke's supposed to do. I know what Olivia's supposed to do. I know what Liam's supposed to do. I'm not waiting by chance. I'm not waiting. Listen, I'm not waiting for them to figure out by the time they're 30 after they have gone through four different degrees. You know what I'm talking about. You start off in psychology and you ended in basket weaving. You know what I'm talking about. You start off in one degree, but then you finish in another. Why? Because you're trying to figure it out. I think you can hear what God wants you to be and go do it right off the bat. Get some direction. And this is what I do. I pray every night, Lord, I pray and I call upon your name to bless them that wherever they go, they will prosper in the name of Jesus. How many believe today? that God wants to use you in intercession. Come on, lift your hands with me. We sing praises to your name. Everybody, come on. quickly. I want to pray. Now listen to me. Everybody likes to be prayed for, but I want to pray for people who truly believe that God has called you to intercession. If he's called you to pray for this church, he's called you to pray for people, he's called you to pray for your family, if you believe God's really put the gift of intercession in your life, I want to just impart some encouragement to you today. If you don't, that's fine, because it is a, it is a unique calling. It's a very, very special call. But I want to highlight that today because God is speaking to me that the breakfast club and even the prophetic class, it's all lined up because God is trying to bring us to a deeper place in the spirit. So if you feel today God's called you, I want to pray for you. I'm not going to take a long time. I just want to pray over you real quickly. We're going to sing this song. And you feel, say, Bishop, I really feel God's called me to intercede. I'm not talking about what has happened or what has not happened in the past. Going forward. Has God called you and spoken to you about your future? If he has, I want to pray for you today, okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray by the Holy Spirit that you would draw your people. You would speak to them today, impart to them your anointing, your power, your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on. Come now. We're going to pray for you. Believe in God. We sing. 
sing praises. We sing praises. We sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh. This morning, listen, you know, I want to just stay right in that vein with Bishop that if you sense the Lord calling you to a deeper place of intercession, we want to pray for you right now. Would you just put that in the chat? Would you say, uh, pray for me? Pray for me. Remember me in prayer as we pray. If you sense that you have a calling on your life to stand in the gap, how powerful is it to recognize the, the importance of this ministry? And that's really what intercession is. It's a ministry before God that, 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 that reaches to heaven and says, Lord, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on the earth just as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Are you saying I'm looking for you that Lord, remember me, write that in the comment. Remember me in this prayer. Father, I thank you for every person that's watching under the sound of my voice. Lord, specifically, we pray for those that that you have called to the ministry of intercession. Father, I pray that you would take us deeper in you. Father, I pray that, that those that hear me now, Lord, that you would open up in their spirit an understanding, Father, a, a, a prophetic insight into the heart and mind of God to know what you're saying and what you're doing. Father, that you would move us, that you would, would wake us up, Lord, that it would be a leading of the spirit and not a work of the flesh. But, Father, I thank you that you're forming us and that, that you're making us and molding us into the image of Christ so that we can be a people that say, Lord, have your way in me. Why don't you say that right now? Lord, have your way in me. Use me for your glory. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks for all that you are doing in Jesus' name. Listen, if you are with us for your first time, we just type new in the comments. If you haven't done so, we would love to connect with you. There's a QR code that we put up uh, that, that you can just scan the QR code and connect with, uh, connect with us so that we can connect with you. And, and listen, God has amazing things in store for you, I hope. That this series, as we continue, listen, next week it's, we're, we're concluding this series. But I hope that this series is blessing you, that you're able to not just hear the word, but to bring it to your prayer closet in application and be a doer of the word. That your prayer life will go to new dimensions and new levels of, 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 of special intimate times with God, with, with such a, a richness of fellowship. But listen, what we heard today is about getting answers. Amen. We want answers in our prayer. We heard some keys, some kingdom keys this morning. What, what, a, what an awesome time. What an awesome time. Listen, if you are in the area or you're traveling to New Orleans and you're able to come, come visit us in church on Sunday. We would love to see you, to, to greet you, and to, to get to know you in person. But until next week, we hope you'll join us right here at 10 a.m. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. May God's goodness and grace go before you today. Have a wonderful day in Jesus' name.